Hi there, I'm Drew Badger, the world's number one English fluency guide, and it is a pleasure to welcome you to another advanced listening practice lesson. I've just woken up, so I'm uh, excited to make a video. I'm uh, going to be quite busy today, but I was inspired to make a video just, you know, thinking about some interesting quotes that have inspired my life, some interesting situations. And uh, actually, I received a mail from one learner who was saying, oh, could I review some things about the past tense? So I thought, why not just, you know, kind of combine these two ideas and talk about some quotes and uh, situations that have been powerful for my own life, but also do so while talking about things from the past. So I'll be describing things in the past and using a lot of past tense um, in this uh, in this video. Anyway, uh, so if I make a mistake or anything while I'm speaking, uh, it's just because I literally just woke up maybe like a couple minutes ago. So I'm, whoa, I'm actually really excited, but yeah. anyway, I'm trying to wake up. It's a beautiful day here in Japan. We actually had a, um, uh, an earthquake last night in, uh, let's see, like I'm in Nagasaki prefecture and, uh, Kumamoto, uh, the next prefecture, uh, over had, uh, like a pretty bad earthquake, like a level seven on the Richter scale. And so we actually felt that last night. Uh, so we were having maybe like a level four, level three earthquake around here. So it wasn't so bad in Nagasaki, uh, but over there was actually uh, pretty, you know, some places were actually pretty badly damaged. So I didn't quite sleep so well last night. But anyway, I'm excited to wake up and uh, make this video for you now. Uh, as usual, uh, if you're new to this uh, series, I'd really appreciate it if you go back and watch some of the previous videos that we made on the channel. That way you can understand this video series better. And uh, if you're ready and you're excited to begin, here we go. So today I thought I would talk about uh, three quotes that have inspired me, th kind of three situations, and maybe you've had the same experience in your own life. You probably had, you know, just in your own life growing up, you get lots of uh, chances to meet other people and to share experiences with them and to learn interesting things from them. So I thought I would share a couple of those in this episode. So the first one I wanted to share was with my, uh, my old nanny and babysitter. So this is a really uh, lovely, fantastic woman that helped to raise me and my younger sister. And uh, she used to come, you know, stay with us like during the day and, you know, clean things and take care of us, make sure we would go to work while, uh, or make sure we would go to school, I should say, uh, when my parents were both out working. So we would spend a lot of time together and we would actually go kind of visit her. Uh, at our house. So, you know, when we just felt like going out and having a fun time, she was really great about having us over, uh, that kind of thing. So on one occasion, when I was riding in the car with her and my sister was with me, we were just going to spend, like, spend the night at her house. Uh, so we lived in uh, Chicago and she lived in Indiana. So it's actually, uh, like, not that far away, but she lived, like, uh, a little bit further away at that time. So she wasn't babysitting us at that time, but, you know, we just kind of missed her and wanted to go spend time with her again. So I'm sitting in the car with my younger sister and her. Uh, her name is Velda, by the way. And so we were driving, or she was driving. We were just riding. We were passengers in the car. But we were riding, uh, and right near her house, uh, there was a cemetery. So we passed a cemetery is a place where you've got a whole bunch of graves for people that are uh, that have passed away. So passed away is a phrasal verb meaning to die. It's kind of a more polite way of saying that someone like passes into the next world to pass away. So anyway, we are driving, uh, kind of going near her house. And, you know, I'm saying that there's a like a cemetery not that far from her. And I said, oh, aren't you like nervous that there's a cemetery near your house? And she kind of thought for a minute and she looked at me and she said, we have more to fear from the living than from the dead. We have more to fear from the living than from the dead. And I thought, wow, that, that was like a really profound, <laughs> a really profound idea. Uh, and it was true. At least I thought about it at the moment. Like, huh, like we are, you know, we kind of get scared about ghosts or something like that. But really, uh, and this isn't, you know, to say that like life should be scary, but, you know, really like a, a graveyard is actually kind of a peaceful place where, you know, people go, go to rest after they've passed away. But it really made me think about something in a different way. And it's something that really stuck with me when something sticks with you. Uh, it's like an idea or something that you, you keep, and it's uh, very powerful. It impacts you in a particular way. So this idea stuck with me of, of, you know, recognizing that we have more to fear from the living than we do from the dead. 
Anyway, so that's the first story. The second one uh, was when I was uh, I was working at a marina. So this is just a place where there are boats, like a local harbor, that kind of thing. Uh, back when I was in college, uh, no, I was in high school, and uh, I remember talking to uh, kind of like the owner, or not the owner, but like the manager of that marina. This is back in Chicago, uh, a really great place. I would, it, it was actually a lot of fun during the summer to hang out on different boats and talk to people. I was like getting tips for, you know, helping people do different stuff. But it was a lot of fun as a summer job. Uh, and this is a typical thing people do in America. They maybe like, I would be studying, you know, like one thing in school, but then go get a summer job doing, you know, whatever, like construction or something like that, uh, just to get outside or do something interesting with my time. So on this occasion, uh, I was talking with the, the manager and he was telling me about a party he was going to. And I knew he had a girlfriend or whatever. So I said, hey, uh, are you going to bring your girlfriend with you to this party? And he said, he kind of like thought for a minute, just like Velda did. And he like thought for a minute and he looked at me and he said, you don't bring sand to the beach. You don't bring sand to the beach. <laughs> and I thought, oh, that's so funny. Like, he was just being, I mean, he was joking, it kind of, but like, you know, he was basically saying, like, you don't bring your girlfriend to a place where there will be lots of women. And I didn't think this was, like, great advice. You know, I wasn't like, oh, wow, like, maybe I should do that. But I just thought it was a really great way of expressing that. Uh, and I kind of admired his like honesty about that. He was like, yeah, you know, I have a girlfriend, but you know, whatever. So not, you know, my personal opinions about that aside, I just thought it was like a really uh, amazing quote because I'd never heard that before. Uh, and so I'm passing that along to you today. So you could use, you know, you don't bring sand to the beach uh, in any kind of thing. Like you don't bring flowers, you know, to Hawaii or something like that because there are already flowers over there. So, I mean, in this kind of situation, you could just use you don't bring sand to the beach because at the beach, there's already lots of sand there. <laughs> Now, the last quote I will leave you with, this one is probably the most important that's affected my life um, and affected the way I think. And so this one was when I was, you know, back at home as a, as a young kid, maybe, I don't know, like eight years old, something like that. I used to do a lot of baking with my mom. So my sister and I, you know, we would also do some baking, but I would make pies and cookies. I just really liked to bake. It was, uh, it was a lot of fun. I don't really do so much of that now, but when I was younger, I did a lot of baking. And uh, so my family, like, we would get, like, you know, really make sure, you know, when we bake something, we would all, like, take our portion of that thing. So if it was a pie, we would cut up the pieces and uh, really make sure that, like, everybody had, like, their own, you know, little slice of it. So me, being, like, a young boy, I would be very impatient and I would, like, get my fourth of the pie or something like that. Uh, and start like eating it really quickly and then I would finish it before everybody else ate their portion. So my younger sister, uh, Emily, so she would be sitting there uh, and have her portion of pie and she would always be very patient and wait. And I don't know why she was waiting, you know, the pie was really good if, right after you make it. Uh, but so she would be sitting there and then wait like a, you know, quite a while. And that when I'm using this phrase, she would be sitting there. What I mean is like she would be doing something uh, or whatever, but like taking time to do something. So she would be sitting there. doesn't mean she's literally sitting someplace. But anyway, so she would be sitting there and thinking, uh, okay, I'm going to wait and like kind of savor it. So savor the anticipation of, of eating the pie. So she was very good about that. I was not, uh, as I was saying, I was kind of uh, like an impatient kind of child. So anyway, I, her, her piece of the pie would be sitting there, you know, in the pie tin in the refrigerator and I would slowly like cut into the side of it. <laughs> so you'd have the kind of top of the pie and I would like slowly kind of walk by and be like, oh, maybe I can have some pie. And I would slowly like cut in on the side of the pie between the top layer uh, and the crust, that kind of thing. So from the top, it looked like there was still a full piece of pie, but really I was like cutting into the side of it. <laughs> But this is just kind of like a silly thing about me. But getting back to uh, the point about the quote here, when I was talking with my dad about like after we would just make a pie and then we would actually cut it into four sections, uh, then 
we would actually kind of like put like our initial on it, like the first letter of our first name. So I would have like an A for Andrew. So Andrew is my first name, my real name, even though I go by Drew. Uh, but um, so anyway, I would like carve, you know, the name of like my my name and D for dad or whatever. And I was talking to my dad one day and I said, hey, like, what if I cut, uh, you know, I'm going to cut like all the all like the pieces or whatever. He said, yeah, sure. You can cut, you know, cut the cut the pie how you would like to distribute it uh, so how you would like to separate it between four people and I said oh fantastic I'm going to cut the pie and give myself a huge piece and give all you guys like just a tiny piece and he said okay you cut I choose you cut I choose and I thought, and it like immediately I thought like, wow, that was like a really great idea for like government and dealing with people and things like that. And so my dad was basically saying like, you can cut whatever size piece you want, like you make the portions, but then I get to choose which piece I want. And you can believe that I was definitely like, I'm going to like cut it exactly. I had like a ruler out to make sure it was like exactly four pieces, exactly of equal size. But that's just another quote that really stuck with me. And when I think about that now, I try to think about rules in that way, about how uh, you're kind of using the situation to make sure that the person is checked from like breaking the rules or doing something like that that would give them too much of an advantage. So another thing, like another example of this rule is, you know, I would be riding in the car with my dad and he would say, oh, you can listen to whatever you want on the radio. And I would say, oh, fantastic. So I would pick a channel and he would say, you can pick the channel but I get to pick the volume. <laughs> so you can pick the channel, but I can pick the volume. So what that means is that like, if I select a channel that's like, you know, like loud rock and roll that maybe he doesn't want to listen to, he can turn the volume all the way off and then we don't listen to anything. So it forces you to compromise and actually have like a really good situation like that. Anyway, that's just uh, three powerful quotes, uh, situations from my life that I wanted to share with you. I thought it was just a great opportunity. So even though I'm uh, kind of still waking up over here in Japan uh, and it's a beautiful day, I thought I would share that with you. I do uh, encourage you to like this video if you uh, really enjoyed it, and I hope you did. And if there are specific things you'd like to learn more about or hear more about in these advanced listening practice lessons, uh, do let me know in the comments below. Just one quick note about uh, subtitles. So when we do have subtitles, they will be optional. So I've seen people talking in the comments about like, no, don't make, don't put subtitles in. And other people say, do put subtitles in. So it doesn't matter. If you want to watch with subtitles, you can. And if you don't want to watch with subtitles, you don't have to watch with subtitles. It's very easy. Anyway, uh, that's it for this video. Again, do like it, do share it with a couple of people, and subscribe to the EnglishAnyone.com YouTube channel if you have not already subscribed. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video lesson. Bye-bye. To continue learning, click on the link in this video to download Speak English Naturally, our free guide to speaking and sounding like a native English speaker. The guide reveals the three most important kinds of conversational English you must learn if you want to sound native and will help you experience instant improvement in your fluency and speaking confidence. To download your free guide on a mobile device, click on the link in the upper right of this video. To download your free guide from a computer, click on the link in the lower right of this video. I look forward to seeing you in the guide.